and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to make the Trinity Stitch Crochet Hat. This is my own hat pattern and it uses one ball of my very own yarn, Chic Sheep by Marley Bird. This is a quick and easy crochet hat pattern, perfect for beginners. It is also a free pattern available at yarnspirations.com. You can find a link to the pattern in the video description box right down there below. And while you're down there, please smash that like button as my kids say. In the pattern, you will find a full list of the materials, but let me go ahead and show you what they are right here. As I mentioned, this hat pattern requires only one ball of yarn. I have added a faux fur pom-pom at the top, so if you wanna add one of those, you can, but it is not mandatory. You will need a size H or five millimeter crochet hook, a couple stitch markers, a tape measure, a tapestry needle, I love these bent tip tapestry needles, and a good pair of scissors. Once you have downloaded that free PDF and gathered your materials, join me back here and you and I will make this really great hat together. Before we start with the pattern, I do wanna to talk to you a little bit about the Trinity Crochet Hat. This hat is worked up flat and then seamed together at the very end. You will make the brim of the hat first and then you turn the brim on its side and you build the body of the hat along the side of the brim. When it's all complete, you will actually fold it together and then seam it up right along the back. Now some of you might be saying, Marley, why didn't you just make the hat in the round? That just seems so much easier. Well, yeah, for experienced crocheters, it typically is. But the beginner crocheter sometimes has a hard time working in the round, understanding where they need to join with the slip stitch, where their first stitch needs to be on the next round, so on and so forth. So in my opinion, by designing this hat to be worked up flat and then seamed up, it will be easier for the beginner crocheter to understand where they are in the pattern. I also chose a stitch for the body of the hat that is a one row repeat. Now the stitch itself is made up of chains and essentially a single crochet three together, but it's not so far off from a basic single crochet that a beginner cannot do it. So I'm just going to expand the beginner crocheters uh, mind, their toolbox, their experience, and take that single crochet they already know how to do and show them how to do a single crochet three together to get this really great textured look. I'm also going to make sure that I use stitch markers. I know those of you who follow along know I love stitch markers, but I think they are great for beginners to know exactly where the last stitch of the row is so they're never off track. So did I design this hat for a beginner? Absolutely. But can an experienced crocheter make this hat? Totally. You'll just be even faster than the beginner. This hat is a great, quick, last minute gift project and I am excited to show all of you how to make it. I am really going to make a hat along with you in this video. So there will be stop points so that way you can catch up to me and I can catch up to you and we will complete a full hat by the end of the video. All right, so I'm ready to jump in. No more talking, I promise. Let's go ahead and we will begin with the brim of the hat. So you will need your stitch markers, your hook, and your yarn. I have my hook, my stitch markers, and my yarn. I'm using the color creme de mint for my hat today, and I'm ready to get started. I can move those out of the way. Let's begin with a slip knot. So you wanna take the tail of the yarn and put it in the palm of your hand. Take your working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. Once you've crossed over, rotate your hand over, Go underneath that first loop and grab that back loop and just pull it off of your fingers. Now as you pull those two legs, see how that little knot tightens up? All you can do now is separate those legs apart. See how that knot becomes nice and snug against your hook? You've just created a slip knot. Once you have your slip knot, it's time to chain for the number of stitches we will have on the brim of the hat. To chain, you take your hook and you wrap it around your working yarn just like so. That's called a yarn over your hook. And then you pull that yarn over 
through the loop on your hook. Yarn over your hook, pull that yarn over through the loop on your hook. You will notice that as I go along, I will use my hand that is not holding the hook and I will set my pad of my thumb onto those chains to keep them nice and even as I go along. Just make sure that they don't accidentally get too tight and they stay nice and uniform. We want to have eight chains here. So I will count here. See those nice V's? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Here is a little note for you. Whenever you are counting stitches or chains, you never count the loop on your hook as a stitch or a chain. Okay, so we have eight chains here and we are ready to begin. So the first thing we are going to do is begin to work back on those chains. That's essentially our foundation row. This is, uh, those are our cast on stitches. That's what we get to work into. It's the edge of our fabric. We've created stitch, uh, um, we've created chains for us to be able to work stitches into them. We will be making single crochets. So we want to skip the first chain and working into the next chain, I will go smack dab down the center of that V. And by doing so, I get the top of the B. So that would be the, that's called the back loop. And then this little bump down there, I call that the butt of the stitch. I like to crochet into my chain around those particular parts of the chain. So I yarned over, pulled up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So that's one single crochet. What I wanna do here is can you see that V behind the loop on my hook? Let's take one of our stitch markers and we will place our stitch marker through that V behind the loop on our hook. And what that is going to do is when we come back down on the next row, that stitch that we just marked, that will be the last stitch of our row. So for those of you who have been crocheting for a while and it feels like you're always dropping stitches or you have extra stitches, this is a great way to combat that. We now know exactly where the last stitch of our row is and we can carry on. So I will go to the next chain, stick my hook into it, making sure that I still have the same um, bits of the chain on my hook as I'm working through, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Smack it right down the center, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. We will do this into each chain all the way to the end. And when all is said and done, we will have seven single crochet. We can now count, if we rest our work just like so, you can see those nice V's at the top of our stitches. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches, which is perfect, that's what we want. Now we are going to build on those seven stitches with more single crochets, only this time we will place our single crochets in the back loop only. Let me show you what I mean. We want to go ahead and chain one and turn our work. You can turn your work and then chain one. It doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you do get that chain one. Now we've done that chain one. We will not work into that chain. We're going to go into the back loop of our first stitch here, which is that right there. You see this V on the top of the stitch? We wanna go into the back loop of that V. You see it, it's right there. So I will go into the back loop only, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Now, that is the first stitch of this row, so I will grab my other marker and I will put it through that V, so that way I know that's the last stitch when I come back to it on the next row. So we carry on. Go to the next stitch over, there's my V, Go into the back leg, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. 
Go to the next, back leg only, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Back leg only, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Back leg only, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. I am going rather slow here. This is specifically for those beginner crocheters. If you've never made a hat before, this is a great video for you. Okay, so I'm to my marked stitch here. And so this is the full V. I still wanna go through the back loop only. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two. And before I take that out, I'm going to count to make sure I still have seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. Perfect. I can now remove this marker and I repeat that last row. So I chain one, turn my work, find the top of my stitch right here. I'm gonna go into the back loop only. So go to the back loop only, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Take my marker that I just took out, put it through that V that is behind the loop on my hook so that I know where the last stitch of my row is so I don't lose stitches. And then I carry on all the way down the row, making single crochets in the back loop only. You can see right there was my marked stitch. I went into the back loop only. I can remove my marker and carry on. You will continue to repeat this row until the brim of your hat measures approximately 20 inches, slightly stretched. This brim is very stretchy, so you wanna make sure that it's not 20 inches without being stretched, otherwise your hat's just not gonna fit very well. So the best thing to do is as you are working along and you think your brim is about the size you want it to be and stretch it out to 20 inches, see if it fits around your head comfortably. You don't want it too tight because you don't want to get a headache and you don't want it too loose because you don't want it to fall down over your eyes. You want it just right. On my sample, I did about 43 ridges. By ridges, what I mean is by creating these back loop only single crochets, you're getting this really cool looking ridge on your fabric. In my sample, I had 43 ridges and that worked well for my hat. So if you kind of work your brim something with the idea of around 43 ridges, that should work out pretty good. All right. Go ahead and finish your brim because we can't move on to the next step until that is complete. That wasn't so bad, was it? Those single crochets through the back loop only are not difficult. You can look at mine right here, and I have my 43 ridges, and I've ended with my yarn up top here, and here is my tail. And the reason I like to do that, it's not written in the pattern, but I'll tell you uh, my little tip here. I like to make sure that I end up on this side, so that way as I'm working down the edge of my brim, I'm not gonna run into my tail. I can weave that in later on. So I have 43 ridges, my yarn is up here, I have not finished it off, and I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is very simple. We are going to now single crochet evenly along the edge of this brim 83 times. So I'm gonna have a total of 83 stitches. You can see here that I've already added a stitch marker at the midway point. By adding that stitch marker at the midway point of the brim, I can now divide up my brim by two, making it easier to evenly space out those single crochets I need to work. I need 83 total single crochets along this brim. So if I put 42 on this side of the stitch marker and 41 on this side of the stitch marker, I'll get my full 83. If you have more stitch markers than the two I told you to get, you could also fold each of these sections in half and place a marker 
So that way you could have four sections instead of just two and it would look a little something like this. So instead of two sections on either side of my blue marker, I could have one, two, three, four sections. Whatever works best for you, that's what I want you to do. But because I started this video and told you only two stitch markers, I'm gonna assume you only have two. So let's go ahead and remove those. So we have our one stitch marker in the center of the brim and we're ready to do our 83 single crochet. Now when we work these single crochets, we are going to work them along this edge. And as I stretch this out, you could see that uh, there's a lot of different places we could put our hook. And when you ask me, Marley, exactly where should I put my hook? My answer is gonna be, place it wherever it looks the best so it looks like it's the most seamless join and so that it doesn't look like your fabric is totally bunching up. Find a rhythm, find a pace, find a look that looks the best for you. We will start off here at the beginning with a chain one. So I've already done a chain one and we will work along the side of our brim. And I will begin my first stitch just right here at that space. I'll take my second stitch marker I know you have and I'm gonna put it into that V behind the loop on my hook because that lets me know that is the last stitch of my row. We're gonna continue on doing that. Now I will just continue on doing my single crochets and I'm going to place a couple on here. I'm just going willy-nilly. You can go into a stitch, you can go around a stitch, you can go into a hole, whatever works best for yours and makes it look good. Once I have a few worked up, I'm gonna take a look and, and be like, okay, that looks good, I like that. Once I've decided that my single crochets look pretty good and they're pretty evenly spaced, I can continue on. I do also want to know how many stitches I've already created. So I look at the top of the stitch and look at those V's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven so far. And I can just continue on until I get to my marker and make sure that for me, I get my 42 before the marker. Once you get the full 42 stitches at the halfway point, take a look at your work, make sure it looks pretty good. Go ahead and continue on past this marker. What I like to do is take my marker out and I will actually put it into that last stitch I created. So that way, if I need to rip out this section, I know that when I get to where this marker is, as I'm ripping out from this marker to this point, I do have my correct stitch count. I have my 42. So from this point on, I just need to get my 41. Once you have 41 stitches on the other side of your stitch marker, we have now set up the entire first row of our hat pattern. Congratulations, we're ready to move on to the Trinity stitch. Let me go ahead and remind you what the Trinity stitch is gonna look like. The Trinity stitch has a lot of texture and it is created by just using chains and a single crochet three together. Now, don't let that word scare you, single crochet three together. You are simply going to pull up loops through a series of stitches or chains and then yarn over your hook and pull through all four loops on your hook. It's a very easy thing to do and if you're a beginner crocheter and you've only done single crochets before, you can absolutely do this. We will take this step by step along this entire row. And the good news is, this is the only row you have to remember. The entire pattern is written on this one row repeat, which is one of the reasons I chose this particular stitch for this hat, because it's for beginners, right? Okay, let's go ahead and learn the Trinity stitch. stitch is a very simple stitch pattern that uses a chain and single crochet three togethers. 
Now I know you beginners out there might be like, wait, Marley, you said this was for me. I don't know that stitch, but I'm here to help you out. I will hold your hand. The single crochet three together is very simple and we are going to just yarn over our hook and pull through all the loops on our hook just like we would if it was a basic single crochet. But instead of working our single crochet into just one stitch, we are going to pull up loops through three different stitches and or chains to create that one Trinity stitch. It's very easy. Take your time, work along with me and you can do this. The good news is this one stitch, this one row, that is all you have to know for the entire body of the hat. It's a one row repeat, meaning once we master this on the first row, we just keep repeating that until our hat measures the distance that is indicated in the hat pattern or as far as you want it to go. So let's go ahead and master this Trinity stitch. Before we get started on the Trinity stitch, we can go ahead and remove this marker on our brim because we don't need that one anymore that was dissecting the midway point on the brim. And we will bring our work over here and get started. We are going to work into each one of these single crochets we created on the previous row. So we start off here with a chain one and we will place a single crochet into this very first single crochet. Now, when I put my hook into there, I want you to notice I have both loops or both legs of the stitch on my hook, meaning I'm not just going through the back leg anymore. I'm gonna work through both legs. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So I've just completed the first single crochet. I'll take my marker, place it into that V behind the loop on my hook, once again, so that I know where the last stitch of my row is, and I carry on. This will be our very first Trinity stitch. We will go into the same stitch that we just worked into. So I'm gonna go into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then I'll go to the next stitch. Again, I'm going through both legs, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then I will go into the following stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have four loops on my hook. When I yarn over and draw through all four loops on my hook, I have just created one stitch. See, I only have one V behind the loop on my hook, but I worked all of that one stitch into three different stitches. And that's where the single crochet three together comes into play, okay? This is how we create the Trinity stitch. We go into the stitch we've already worked into, the next one and the following one. So it's three stitches, but that final yarn over and pull through makes it just one stitch. We then carry on with a chain one and we do it again. So I'll go into the last stitch I worked into here. So I'll go into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, go into the following stitch, make sure you go through both legs, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then go into the following stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Four loops on my hook, yarn over, draw through all four, it leaves one stitch. I've worked through three stitches, chain one, and carry on. This is the last stitch I worked into, so I will go through that one first, go to the next stitch, and then go to the next stitch. Four loops on my hook, yarn over, draw through all four, and then chain one. Make sure as you're working along those chain ones, make it so that they're not like super tight. You don't want it to be like, oh, I worked through, now I'm gonna chain one, and see how small that chain is? You want your chain to be roughly the same size as the top of your finished single crochet three together, okay? So let's do this again. I'm going into the stitch I just worked into, yarn over, pull up a loop. Go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then go into the, la the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I've worked through three stitches. I have four loops on my hook, yarn over, draw through all four, okay? and then chain one. I will do this all the way down the brim 
until I get down here to this last stitch and we have to do something slightly different down there. So I will go ahead and continue on on my brim for this row. You will do the same thing and we'll meet down at the end. As I come up here to the end of my row, I wanna make sure that on this last Trinity stitch I'm creating, I will go into that last stitch I worked into the next stitch and then the following stitch is actually where my stitch marker is so I'll go into where my stitch marker is yarn over pull up a loop complete my Trinity stitch but I will not do a chain one I actually finish this row with a single crochet in that same last stitch so in the same stitch that I just worked into I will just finish with a single crochet Okay, so that's how you will finish this row. We start the row with the single crochet and jump into the Trinity stitch, and we finish the row with this Trinity stitch and we end with a single crochet. We will now go ahead and turn our work and then repeat all of that over again. And we will continue to do that for the body of the hat. It makes it very easy. Now this time as we turn our work and we are working along this row, we don't have only stitches to go into, we have chains as well. So we start off with our chain one, we will begin with our single crochet into this first single crochet, and now we jump into our pattern. So we'll do our trinity stitch with one loop pulled up from that first stitch we created, one loop pulled up from that next stitch, and then one loop pulled up from the next stitch. All right, can you see that? Yarn over, draw through all four. We do our chain one and we continue on. Go into that last one that we had worked into and pull up a loop. Go to the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop, and go to the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through all four, chain one. You will notice here that if you made those chains too tight on that previous row, they will be difficult to get into. So you really wanna make sure you're maintaining those chains um, to be the same size as the resulting stitch, like the top of the stitch, okay? It's very important that you do that. And we just continue on doing this, guys. Can you see how every time I go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, I really make my hook, it's essentially parallel to my work, and yarn over and then draw through all three. It makes it so that the stitches have really nice uniformity and texture. And then I chain one and I carry on. I will finish this row by making sure that I put a single crochet into the last stitch of the row and just keep on keeping on. See how pretty that looks? Isn't that great? The back side of the Trinity stitch has a really great look. So because we're turning our work back and forth, we're getting a lot of really great texture here. I just love it so much. Pretty easy so far, isn't it? You just keep repeating row two until the body and the brim together measure approximately eight inches. You can make it a little bit shorter or a little bit longer if you want. Just remember that will change up how much yarn you need to finish your hat, okay? So let's go ahead, continue on working row two until your hat measures approximately eight inches. That includes the brim. And then we can meet back here and we will work the crown of the hat. Oh, I almost forgot. Down here, don't forget to take your stitch marker and move it up so that way you know what the last stitch of the row is, okay? So you wanna make sure you're still keeping that marker in place. That will make it so your edges stay nice and straight. All right, I think that's everything. Continue on with row two, and then I'll meet you back here for the crown of the hat. At this point, your hat looks a little something like this. You have a height that is about eight inches, you have a width that is about 20 inches, and you're probably looking at your skein of yarn like, I'm gonna run out here. Well, if you have reached gauge on your hat and your hat does measure the 20 inches by eight inches, 
you should be fine for these last four rows and to seam up your hat. If for some reason your hat is larger than those sizes I just gave you, it is possible you might need more yarn just because you were getting a larger gauge than was given on the hat pattern, but that doesn't mean your hat is not gonna turn out. It's just gonna be a little bit bigger than what the sample is. Um, so hopefully you have enough yarn to finish your hat and uh, we'll be ready to go. Okay, so I have reached the portion of the body that I think is the the... Okay, so I have reached the body measurements and I'm ready to move on to the crown. And the crown is just a fancy way of saying, we're going to decrease now at the top of the hat to bring it all together so that way it will fit the top of your head. We are going to do that by eliminating the chain one spaces between our Trinity stitches. So as we go down this next row, we will not do the chain ones. We'll go from one Trinity stitch to the next, okay? And then we will continue to do that for the following three rows. It really is quite simple. You're not learning anything new. We're just eliminating the chain. So let's go ahead and jump in. I have turned my work, I'm ready to begin row one of the crown. As I work my Trinity stitches down this row, I am not going to add a chain between them. I have chained one at the turn. I will single crochet in the first stitch, just like I have been. And then I jump in to the Trinity stitch, just like before, so nothing new here. All of this is the same, but here's where things change. Before, I used to chain one and move on, but now I am going to just simply move on and do a trinity stitch. I'm also going to make sure that this, the, the final loop that's on my hook is pulled nice and snug to keep that stitch nice and snug. I don't want it to get stretched out and um, look floppy because then I'll get a hole at the top of my hat. So as I create the next Trinity stitch, see how nice and close all of those loops are? When I yarn over and draw through all four, you'll see I'm giving it a nice tug uh, there at the end and making that loop nice and snug and the stitch is nice and snug. As I go along working these Trinity stitches and keeping this stitch nice and snug, my work here is gonna naturally start to cup in on itself because we're shrinking the size of our fabric here at the top. It's like we're pulling it all in, okay? So it's naturally gonna start curling on itself. For me, I actually will encourage it to curl a little bit. It makes it easier for me to work the stitches versus trying to keep it nice and straight and flat. It's actually easier to keep this stitch nice and snug as this curls around. It makes it easier to get to the stitches and keep them consistent with that Trinity stitch, okay? Remember, you're not doing any chain ones. You see that? See how it's naturally starting to already cup in on itself and my fabric is starting to pull up here, which is what I want. This is gonna decrease down and the crown of the hat will fit around the top of my head, real nice and neat. So we're gonna do this all the way to the end of the row and we will finish the same way we did all the previous stitches that we did on the body with that Trinity stitch and then a final single crochet in the last stitch of the row. I am coming up to one of my last Trinity stitches right here. And this is just like what I said when I finish this last one in my marked stitch, I do finish with my single crochet there at the very end. And seeing that marker reminds me, I forgot to add my marker down here at the start. So I will come back here and add it now just so that it is there, but you can see here already, see how the fabric is starting to just cup in on itself? If yours is doing that, that is exactly what it is supposed to do, okay? We're gonna repeat that row 
three more times. And each row will go faster and faster because you will have fewer and fewer stitches as we get to the end of the row. But you still will uh, finish the row with that trinity stitch and the single crochet and you will start the row with the single crochet and the trinity stitch. All right, so none of that changes. So let's go ahead and finish this crown. <sighs> And then we get to seam up your hat. When you get to the end, don't forget to finish with that single crochet in that last stitch. And then you will turn your work. So I'm going to take that off. I have turned my work. I'm ready to begin the third row of my crown shaping. So I chain one. I will work a single crochet in the first and then jump right into my trinity stitch. Remember, I want to keep all of these stitches nice and snug. And by doing that, I am making sure that the transition from the body to the crown looks really great. I don't want to forget my marker here in that very first single crochet. I keep forgetting to put my marker in. So I put my marker in that very first single crochet. So I know that's the last stitch of my row. And then I carry on with the Trinity and I will let my fabric naturally curl around on itself. Okay, so I'm going to naturally let it just start to curl. By doing that, you make the top of your hat look really good. Okay, so let those stitches just naturally curl and continue on. The end of your row, don't forget that single crochet at the very end. You can go ahead, remove your marker, and we have one more decrease row. So I will turn my work, and I will chain one, and I will work this last row. And it's the last row, so I'm not gonna need to mark this stitch this time, because I am not gonna come back to work into it. There's my first single, and I continue on with my trinity keeping those stitches nice and snug. You'll notice that as I'm going along, like I, I rest my finger on my stitches on my hook to keep them tight so that they don't go anywhere. So like I'm resting my middle finger on the loop that's on my hook so that way it doesn't get any bigger than what it is so that I can keep those stitches nice and snug. It helps maintain consistency. Almost done here. One more. And that's the last one. I don't want to forget my final single crochet. So I'm at the end of my crown. Yay! <laughs> it's time to finish off the top of our hat now, but I wanna keep a nice long tail so that way I can use the tail to seam up my hat. So before I do anything, I'm gonna pull out a nice length of yarn here. And I, I would say you wanna make sure it's at least two times the full length of your hat, maybe three. Let's say three times the full length of your hat, maybe give yourself a little extra, and let that be your tail, okay? Let that be your tail. Now we can, up here at the top, I will finish off, so I chain one, and I just pull that string all the way through to finish off, okay? So that's the top of my hat, and you can see here, all of those decreases really brought it around nice and neat. See how if I let my hat cup around, it becomes a nice little circle there. Can you see that? So here's the body of my hat, and then here's the top of my hat. The next step is to thread that nice long tail onto a tapestry needle and seam up this hat. What we will do is take your tail and your bent tip tapestry needle and if you take your tail and you pinch it around the eye of your needle and then take it out, you can just wiggle that little yarn right through the eye, okay? So now we have threaded our tapestry needle. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna hold 
the top of my hat together, okay? So this was my first stitch of my last row, and this was the last stitch of my last row. So going through the front loop, okay? So I'm gonna go through the front loop of the stitches. I'm gonna pull that through. It's now connected. I'm gonna go through the front loop of the next stitch. Not going through both loops, you guys, just the front loop, front loop of the next stitch, front loop of the next stitch, front loop of the next stitch, so on and so forth until I get to the end of my round here. And what this will do is as I pull this together like a drawstring, okay, pull it together like a drawstring, it pulls the top of my hat nice and neat together. Okay, pretty cool. The next step is to seam the side of the hat. So we can continue on with the yarn that's attached to our tapestry needle and seam down the side of our hat. I like to go ahead and maneuver my hat so that way I have it pinched together where I want the join to happen. Then I will usually take my stitch markers, see how handy they are? And I'm going to just attach the two pieces together just so they don't get off too far, okay? So as I'm working along, it doesn't look like all of a sudden it's off like this. So I try and match up the rows because you can see the beginning of the row and the end of the row. So I'm gonna just match them up just like so, okay? And then with my hand on the inside, just to guide myself along, my hand's on the inside here, and I'm just holding the fabric in such a way that I can see where the two pieces meet up. And I am literally just going to grab a couple of bits of each side. So I grab a little bit over here and a little bit over there, and I'll pull this through. You can see here where the two, the two rows meet up. So I'll grab a bit over here, a bit over here, and pull. All right. We will do this all the way down this seam. And as you're going along, just take a moment and just check to make sure that nothing is off kilter, like it's not like this or anything. So just seam up your hat, just like this. When you get to the brim of the hat, I like to go through that left behind loop from our foundation chain and the back loop of the remaining or the last row you did. And I just feel like that makes it look like it's a nice finish and it looks like the ridge is continuous all the way down. And I just go stitch for stitch because we have seven stitches on both sides, so why not? And I keep going on here. And at the very end, once you get this all together, you can see that this looks really nice and neat. Nothing is off. All the rows are lined up. At the very bottom here, I like to finish off with what I call a figure eight. So I will go up one side and come around and go up the other side so that I get that figure eight. Once you do your figure eight, you go ahead and weave in your tail on the inside of your hat. So you have to decide which side that is. This stitch pattern really is reversible. So either side could be the right side. I will totally leave that up to you based on how your hat looks. So I'm gonna call this the wrong side of my hat because I think it's a little bit um, more nubby and stuff than the other side. So I would just weave in my tail here. I'm just going up my, my fabric and I wanna make sure I go back and forth a couple directions. And you will do this with your beginning tail as well. And then if you had to cut out a knot or if you had a flub in your yarn, you needed to cut and rejoin, you would make sure you weave in those ends as well. Once it's all woven in, give it a good snip turn it right side out and you have your cute little hat. Look how adorable that hat is. 
Now, I do not have enough yarn left over to make a yarn pom-pom. I mean, literally, that's all the yarn I have left from my ball of yarn. But if I wanted to, I could get one of these really nifty store-bought pom-poms and just attach it to the top of my hat. How cute would that be? Or, like this one's navy blue, maybe I go with a little bit more of a poolside sort of blue. That looks really awesome together. Or don't add a pom-pom at all. It's totally up to you. I really hope you learned something new in this video, whether it was a tip or a trick, or maybe even just some validation in the way that you crochet. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite part was. I would love to know that. Better yet, when you finish your hat, share with me on social media. Use hashtag MarleyBird or hashtag Yarnspirations so that way I can see your finished project and smash your like button. I'm Marley Bird for Yarnspirations.com. Make sure you have hit subscribe so you're up to date whenever I release a new video and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye. Okay, I've added my pom-pom. Let's see what it looks like. What do we think of my cute little hat? Does it look good? Oh, I love this hat. It is absolutely adorable. I think you need to take pictures of yourself in your hat and share with me.